It's Monday morning, and Marcus, a software developer, walks into his office. As he settles at his desk, he overhears his colleague Sarah loudly complaining, I can't believe they gave that project to Alex instead of me. Don't they know I'm the best programmer here? Marcus sighs. It's not the first time he's heard Sarah talk like this. In fact, it seems like everywhere he turns these days, he's running into people who believe the world owes them something just for existing. Sound familiar? Welcome to our exploration of self-entitled people and why, according to ancient Stoic wisdom, you should give them a wide berth. Today, we're diving into a topic that's as old as humanity itself, but with a twist. We're looking at it through the lens of Stoicism, a practical philosophy that's been helping people navigate life's challenges for over 2,000 years. But first, let's get on the same page. What exactly is selfish entitlement? Simply put, it's the belief that you deserve special treatment or privileges without earning them. Sarah thinks she should get every good project just because she's Sarah. Now you might be wondering, what does a bunch of ancient Roman philosophers have to do with dealing with entitled people in the 21st century? Stick around because you're about to discover how the teachings of Stoics like Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus and Seneca can be your secret weapon in navigating a world where entitlement seems to be on the rise. By the end of this video, you'll have a toolbox complete with Stoic strategies to 1. Recognize entitled behavior, even in yourself. Yes, we're going there. 2. Understand why it's crucial to distance yourself from overly entitled people. 3. Deal with entitled individuals when you can't avoid them. So grab your virtual toga and let's embark on this Stoic journey together. The Psychology of Self-Entitlement, a Stoic View. The Psychology of Entitlement, a Stoic Perspective. All right, let's dive deeper into the entitled mind, shall we? But instead of modern psychology textbooks, we're going to flip through the writings of some old school thinkers. Trust me, these guys knew a thing or two about human nature. Let's start with Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher who began his life as an enslaved person and ended up as one of the most respected teachers in Rome. Epictetus had much to say about desire and aversion, two concepts at the heart of entitled behavior. He once said, He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. Now imagine Sarah from our intro taking this advice to heart. Instead of griping about the project she didn't get, she might appreciate the skills and opportunities she already has. However, entitled people often do the opposite. They focus on what they think they deserve rather than what they actually have. This brings us to an important Stoic principle. Virtue. For the Stoics, virtue wasn't about being a goody two-shoes. It was about living in harmony with nature and reason. They believed that virtue, made up of wisdom, justice, courage and self-control, was the only true good. Contrast this with entitled behavior. An entitled person might say, I deserve this because I want it. While a Stoic would ask, is wanting this in line with virtue? Does it make me wiser, more just, courageous or self-controlled? Let me share a story about one of my favorite Stoics. Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Despite being the most powerful man in the world, Marcus constantly struggled against entitlement. In his personal journal, later published as Meditations, he often reminded himself not to be corrupted by his position. There's an anecdote about Marcus dealing with entitled senators. These men thought they deserved special treatment simply because they were senators. But Marcus, drawing on his stoic training, treated them like any other citizen. He famously said, If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it. And this you have the power to revoke at any moment. In essence, Marcus was saying, Look, 
I can't control these senators' entitled behavior, but I can control my reaction to it. Recognizing self-entitled behavior through a stoic lens. Now that we've delved into the psychology of entitlement, let's talk about how to spot it in the wild. And who better to guide us than Seneca, the OG of calling out fake philosophers? Seneca was a wealthy Roman statesman and Stoic philosopher with a knack for seeing through people's pretenses. In one of his letters, he writes about encountering a group of people who claimed to be philosophers but were really just entitled braggarts. He said, Men who have made philosophy their choice yet do not shape their conduct to their professions are no better than those who own doctors but never follow their prescriptions. Boom! Seneca just dropped the mic on entitled behavior. So, according to our Stoic philosophers, what are some key traits of self-entitled individuals? 1. They believe they're special and deserve privileges without earning them. 2. They have difficulty accepting criticism or admitting mistakes. 3. They often blame others for their problems. 4. They have unrealistic expectations of others and the world around them. 5. They struggle with empathy and considering others' perspectives. This could involve journaling, meditation, or simply spending time in nature. 5. Use entitled behavior as a teaching tool. When you encounter it, use it to reflect on your attitudes and behaviors. Are there areas where you might harbor a sense of entitlement without realizing it? Remember, the goal isn't to eliminate all problematic people from your life. That's not possible or even desirable. As Marcus Aurelius said, the art of living is more like wrestling than dancing. The challenge is part of what helps us grow. Instead, the stoic approach is about developing the inner resilience to deal with entitled behavior effectively without letting it disturb your peace of mind or compromise your principles. It's about recognizing what you can and can't control, focusing on your virtue and using every interaction, even the difficult ones, as an opportunity for personal growth. Why avoiding self-entitled people is crucial. Stoic wisdom on relationships. Picture this. It's ancient Rome and you're Lucius, a young merchant trying to make your way in the bustling marketplace. You've got a choice to make. On one side, there's Quintus, a flashy trader known for his grandiose claims and belief that he's God's gift to commerce. On the other, there's Claudia, a quiet but respected businesswoman who treats her customers and fellow merchants with equal respect. If you were seeking advice, you might turn to Epictetus, the formerly enslaved person turned renowned Stoic teacher. Epictetus would likely remind you of one of his key teachings. The key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. This translates to a simple but powerful idea in our modern world. The people we surround ourselves with shape who we become. Why is it crucial to avoid self-entitled people? Let's break it down with a story. Meet Elena a talented graphic designer starting her career. She landed her dream job at a hip advertising agency and is thrilled to work alongside creative professionals. However, she soon notices her teammate Alex has a habit of claiming credit for others' ideas and demanding special treatment from their boss. At first, Eleanor tries to brush it off, thinking it's just part of the competitive industry. However, as days turn into weeks, she becomes more stressed, second-guessing her abilities and even starting to adopt some of Alex's entitled behaviors to keep up. This is where our old friend Seneca would chime in. In one of his letters to his protege, Lucilius, Seneca wrote, Associate with those who will make a better man of you. Welcome those whom you yourself can improve. The process is mutual, for men learn while they teach. Elena's story illustrates why distancing ourselves from entitled people aligns perfectly with Stoic principles of virtue. The Stoics believed that true happiness comes from living a life of virtue, wisdom, justice, 
courage and self-control. Entitled people with their constant focus on what they deserve rather than what they can contribute often pull us away from these virtues. Think about it. How often have you found yourself compromising your values or feeling drained after spending time with someone who constantly puts their desires above everything else? It's like trying to fill a leaky bucket. No matter how much positivity or virtue you pour in, it drains away in the presence of entitlement. But here's the kicker. The Stoics weren't advocating for completely cutting off difficult people. Instead, they encouraged us to be mindful of the company we keep and its effect on our character. As Marcus Aurelius put it, the soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. What's the Stoic solution? It's about striking a balance. Limit your exposure to entitled individuals when you can, but when you must interact with them, use it as an opportunity to practice your Stoic virtues. Let their entitlement be the whetstone that sharpens your patience, compassion, and commitment to living according to your principles. Take Elena again. She decided to take a Stoic approach. Instead of letting Alex's behavior change her, she used it as motivation to double down on her integrity. She started keeping a work journal, crediting her teammates' contributions, and focusing on improving her skills rather than seeking recognition. Over time, her colleagues and superiors noticed her genuine talent and teamwork, leading to new opportunities and a much more fulfilling career path. The lesson we create an environment that nurtures our growth and happiness by choosing to associate more with those who inspire us to be our best selves and learning to navigate interactions with entitled individuals without compromising our values. It's not about avoiding all problematic people. It's about being intentional with our relationships and using every interaction to practice Stoic wisdom self-improvement in his meditations. Marcus Aurelius wrote, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This is the cornerstone of stoic self-improvement. It's not about controlling the world, but mastering our thoughts and actions. Let me tell you about Sophia, a rising star in a tech startup. She's brilliant, hardworking and well, starting to feel a bit entitled. After landing a few big clients, she begins to expect special treatment. She shows up late to meetings, figuring the team can wait for her. She dismisses ideas that aren't her own and even starts to believe that the company's success is mostly due to her efforts. Sound familiar? Maybe you've been Sophia at some point. I know I have. This is where stoic self-reflection comes in handy. Here are some exercises inspired by Stoic philosophy to help us check our sense of entitlement. 1. Evening Review This is a practice Marcus Aurelius swore by. At the end of each day, ask yourself, Did I expect special treatment today? Why? Did I blame others for my problems or take responsibility for my actions? Did I show gratitude for what I have? or focus on what I think I deserve. 2. Voluntary Discomfort This stoic practice involves intentionally putting yourself in uncomfortable situations to build resilience and appreciate what you have. Maybe it's taking the stairs instead of the elevator or eating a simple meal instead of dining out. The goal is to remind yourself that you can handle discomfort and don't need constant luxury. 3. Memento Mori The Stoics often reminded themselves of their mortality. It sounds grim, but it's a powerful way to put things in perspective. When you remember that your time is limited, it becomes clear how pointless it is to waste energy feeling entitled. 4. Premeditatio Malorum This is the practice of negative visualization. Regularly imagine losing the things you feel entitled to. It's a great way to cultivate gratitude and resilience. Now, back to Sophia. 
she decides to try these stoic practices. She starts each morning by reminding herself that her position and success are not guaranteed. She volunteers for a challenging project outside her comfort zone and begins to express gratitude for her team's contributions consciously. Over time, Sophia notices a change. She feels more grounded, appreciative of her colleagues, and ironically, more valued by her team. By letting go of her sense of entitlement, she becomes the kind of leader people genuinely want to follow. The stoic approach to overcoming entitlement is not about denying your worth or downplaying your achievements. It's about recognizing that true self-worth comes from your character and actions, not from external validation or special treatment. Remember, breaking free from entitlement is an ongoing process. Even Marcus Aurelius, with all his wisdom, felt the need to remind himself daily about staying humble and virtuous. So be patient with yourself, keep practicing, and watch as your stoic mindset transforms not just how you deal with entitled people, but how you approach life itself. Building a life of virtue in a world of entitlement. We've journeyed through the land of entitlement, armed with the wisdom of ancient philosophers. Now it's time to answer the big questions. Why should we care about all this, and how can we apply it in our lives? The truth is plain and simple. You can't control the entitled people around you, but you can absolutely control how you respond to them. And that, my friends, is where your power lies. Why should you strive to build a life of virtue in a world full of entitlement? Because it's the surest path to genuine happiness and peace of mind. You become unshakable when you base your worth on your character rather than external validation. No entitled person can take that away from you. So how do we do this? Here are three Stoic-inspired strategies you can start applying today. 1. Practice gratitude daily. Instead of focusing on what you think you deserve, appreciate what you already have. It's a simple shift that can transform your life. 2. Reframe challenges as opportunities for growth. When you encounter entitled behavior, ask yourself, how can this situation help me become more patient, understanding, or resilient? 3. Focus on your actions, not the outcomes. Do your best in everything you do, but remember that the result isn't entirely in your control. Your virtue lies in your effort, not in external recognition. Building a life of virtue isn't about being perfect, it's about consistent effort and gradual improvement. You're growing stronger whenever you choose patience over frustration, understanding over judgment, or humility over entitlement. You're part of the Stoic community now, meaning you're never alone on this journey. We all work together to navigate life's challenges with wisdom and grace. So, the next time you're faced with entitled behavior, Take a deep breath and remember that you have the power to choose your response. Choose virtue, choose growth, choose the path of the Stoic.